Hello, welcome to a quick presentation explaining how to answer question 19 on the uh, January 2010 Physics on the Go at Excel syllabus paper. Okay, pause the video and read this question. Okay, the question asks to um, explain whether the rubber band obeys Hooke's law. Okay, no, the rubber band does not obey Hooke's law because Hooke's law states that force should be proportional to extension. And as you can see here, that would give you a straight line on the graph, and that's not the case in this. So it's perfectly fine just to say, no, the elastic band does not uh, obey Hooke's law, as force is not proportional to extension. The second part of the question says, use the graph to show that the elastic strain energy stored in the rubber band, when it has an extension of 10 centimeters, is less than 0.8 joules. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if you did work on an object to raise it, say we lifted an object up, okay, through a certain distance, we could just calculate the work done on the object, and that would be the energy stored in it. In that case, because the mass would remain constant, the force of gravity would remain constant, you could just use the formula force times distance, because, um, because the force remained constant. <clears throat> on a graph, that would look like this, force against displacement, you just have a straight line. The area of that graph would be telling you the energy stored. For an elastic band, or for anything that's elastic, when you look at force against the uh, displacement, right, you get a graph like that. However, it's still true that the area underneath the graph is equal to the energy stored. So what we need to do to prove this is find the area underneath this graph. As this graph is a curved line, we're going to have to do some kind of um, approximation to try and work out the area uh, under the curve. And we don't have an equation for the line or anything, so we'd have to do it. We have to do it that way. So use a ruler. And what I've done here is I've, I've, I've made the assumption that this little slither of area here is roughly approximately the same as this sliver. So even though if I calculate the area under this red line, the loss of this and the gaining of this should cancel each other out, and I should be get, making a pretty fair approximation to the area under the line. Okay, so what I need to do then is to get the area. I will be taking this rectangle, and that rectangle is 3 high and 10 wide, 3 multiplied by, now the 10 is in centimeters, and work you must calculate with meters, so 10 centimeters is 0 0.1 meters, and I'll want to add that to the area underneath this triangle. So I'll be using half base times height for the triangle, um, so the base again is 10, or 0 0.1, um, the height of the triangle, which will be from here to here, this height, the same as here, is um, from 3 to 12, which is 9. And of course, I want to divide this all by 2 because it's a triangle, and I want to get this, uh, you know, if I find the area of the rectangle and divide it by 2, I'm finding the area of the triangle. Okay, so... <coughs> 3 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.3. Uh, that's going to be 0 0.9 divided by 2, which will be 0 0.45. And add them together comes to 0 0.75 joules. And as you can see, it is smaller. Okay, So smaller than 0 0.8. Okay, So let's move on to the next part of the question. Okay, pause the video and read this question. Okay, so here it says that the rubber band is extended by 10 centimeters before being released. Before being released, calculate the maximum possible initial speed of the aeroplane. So what we're saying is is that the strain energy available to the elastic band is 0.75 joules. Sorry, to the paper aeroplane. Uh, so 0.75 joules is going to be converted into kinetic energy. It will soon equal the half mv squared of the object. So I just need to rearrange this equation to tell me what V will be, as I have M. Uh, so I'll just substitute. No, I'll wait till I substitute numbers in. So uh, let's just rearrange for uh, this. So if I want to get rid of the half there, I multiply by 2. If I want to get rid of M on this side, I divide both sides by M. If I want to get rid of the root, sorry, the squared, I do the root. Okay, so I've just got V is equal to root 2 times 0 0.75 over m, and m is 0 0.275, so I'll just put that in, 0 0.027, sorry. Okay, um, and plugging the numbers into the calculator gives us 
four five meters per second, and I'll just round that up to seven point five meters per second for my final answer. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and read this question. Okay, so what's going on here is this line is showing us the force that you would have to apply if you wanted to extend the elastic band by this. If you then took a Newton meter and allowed the elastic band to go back, this is what you'd get back, this force. And that force is lower than the force you put in. So another way of thinking about it is, is that when you extended this, you put some work in, and when the elastic band gave you the work back, which is kind of an informal way of saying it, but when the elastic band gave you the work back, it gave you back less. So you put in the work of the area of this entire area, and what you got back was this area underneath the second line. So this area in the middle here is the energy or the work that you put in that got wasted was heat due to um, thermal energy or due to internal friction in the material when it was being deformed. So to you want to as long as you get the idea, hopefully you'll be able to express it. So what I've done is I've written it down beforehand. Work is being done on the elastic band and being stored as strain energy. So I'm talking about energy transfers. We're saying that work's been done on the elastic band and it was stored as strain energy and some as heat. As the band returns to its original shape, more energy is converted from strain to heat. Okay, so that's enough to answer this question. And if you actually have the exam paper with you, you'd see that the next question goes much more into detail into this. So pause the video and read this question. Okay, so for this question, it says the maximum speed of the aeroplane will be less than that calculated in C. Without further calculation, use the graph to explain this. So I think I've already explained that a little bit. But essentially, this area here is not going to be available. This amount of energy that I'm coloring in, because remember the area of this graph is energy, will not be available to the aeroplane because this is what's dissipated as heat. Okay? So what we're going to say is the work done on the elastic band or the energy transferred to it will not be available for the aeroplane as some will be dissipated as heat due to internal friction in the material. This energy is shown as the area between the two between the stretching line and the returning line colored in on the graph. It's also true to say that some of that energy won't be available to the plane because the, the elastic band itself will have some follow through and it will gain some of the kinetic energy as well. Okay, I hope you found this useful. If you have any comments or questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.